Hi everyone, welcome back to a Thread Thursday. Now, um, sometimes I have talked about these pineapple designs, this shape, uh, because I, when I picked up some um, secondhand stuff from a lady, from her grandma who'd made it, um, I was quite fascinated by this beautiful shape. And I realised I've got this little book that's got them in. I, I don't know where I got it, actually. I think I got it out at the mill in Ballarat. So if anyone's Melbourne-based or visiting Melbourne, the mill actually has... Uh, it's all a massive, massive, massive shed that has a lot of um, second-hand, antique, all, all sorts of things, all from ranging from books to material to clothing to rick-rack to cabinets, glasses, you know, all sorts of things, antique tins. It's a very fun day to go and have a wander. Anyway, I thought I would just share this little book. So here's, here's the um, concept of pineapples. And I'll hunt some out in a second and show you if I can. So there's quite a few little patterns in here. I'm actually wondering, I, I don't know if I can do such fine work, but I'll, I could give one a try maybe. There's a whole tablecloth. I won't be giving that a try. <laughs> there's a bedspread. I won't even be giving that a, even a thought. Tablecloths. So a little, um, uh, what do you call these in crochet? You know, the little... Well, it says a motif, but um, uh, in crocheting there's a name. I thought there was a name. Anyway, whatever. Uh, luncheon set. So here's a little one. Coffee mat. So as with the lace work, you know, um, it's very fine. requires a very fine thread and a very fine needle. Uh, so I, I may try to make one on something just a bit thicker because, um, you know, I'm not quite as adept at the super fine work anymore, but I might just try a motif, just one. So there you go. That's a pineapple crochet design. Okay. So the first motif, first pineapple. So I'm going to keep this open here, but what I want to do is get onto my stitch wheel. So we've only got one, two, three, four left. So let's start the next stitch. Okay, so we're going to do Portuguese stem stitch. Now I'm going to, so I've got two lines. Now I'm going to do it right-handed the way Kathy's doing it. So a normal stem stitch would be take a stitch and then just keep this out of the way. Normally you come up when you start in the middle like here but you're just going to come up just at the one quarter mark from the first stitch it through and then you're going to come between those two stitches and do a two times through like a double and then just get this bit of fluff out the way you're going to take a stitch like a normal stitch when you come up In the back, come up where you went down into that stitch there, and in between those two, you're going to wrap that twice one, two. Okay, so take a stitch. Come up where you went down the last time and through that little 
needle spot just before where you came down from the previous stitch. And so you continue that all the way along. My stitches are a little bit uneven, so it will create an uneven look if you do that. so on all the way along the line so going left to right is generally the way a right hander would do it apparently um, I don't know I just I think I've said before I just do a variety of different ways just simply because I'm ambidextrous okay so on the last one to do it the same as you would for the start exactly the same get your first knot done um, instead of doing your second knot through you're just going to come to the back and that finishes it off so you can see you can see that it's a it, it looks like a chain stitch almost but it's, it's got the little knots, so it's just another variety of stem stitch you could use on a plant, which I will now that I've done it. It will be quite good. Um, now, I know that Kathy did these two lines on hers because she always comes back and shows the left-handed way to do it. However, I've counted up and I'm going to have one stitch too many, so I'm going to have a look and see if I should put it here. Okay, so... Um, to do another stitch in this spot, so I've got room, because the other ones are a little bit more intricate, this is actually the last stitch that Kathy does, which is called Quaker Stitch, but because it's a, um, a it uses a back stitch as well, it's uh, not, too, not too hard to fit it in on a line. Coming back to the start, this is just how you start it off. Taking another stitch. Now instead of, as you would with stem stitch, coming up at the end of the last, you're going to actually split the stitch halfway between the two points, creating a split back stitch. So it's a split back stitch and stem stitch. Combination of the two, called Quaker stitch and really good for lettering. I'm doing these a bit wide apart. because it's a bit, a bit raised, so a little bit interesting when it comes to lettering. I really, really like it. Um, what Cathy was suggesting was that you did it actually, uh, if I'd have had one extra spare and was doing this, I would have probably done my initials, That's because that's what she suggested. It's definitely good for lettering. But you know, I am going to probably go and do a bit of red work with this stitch and do some words. This isn't entirely split because uh, I think I'm, it's three strands, so I can't really do a split stitch on three strands. It's just somewhere there in the middle. there so I don't know if you can see if I can try and get it on an angle the difference between the Portuguese knotted and the Quaker and um, where is don't know where our stem stitches are so there's one in there that 
that's a split back stitch. This, this is a stem stitch. So at a glance they can all look similar, but they're not, they're very different. Well, I really like that. So let's go to this next closed feather stitch we're going to do on this next one. All right, closed feather stitch. We've got two lines again. It's a bit of a border, this one. Now, Kathy did start it as a right-hander. She started it right to left. So I'm going to attempt to do it left to right because I think my brain will work better that way. So if you're imagining that's the point of a triangle and these are the two ends of a triangle, this is going to be the shape you're looking for. Okay, so what you're going to do is wrap this under and when you pull it through, you've created like a triangle or one, two sides of a triangle. And then you're going to come in at this one and do the same with this wrapped under. So you're basically creating a series of triangles. Just so long as you get this wrapped under. So you can see how it could be um, quite a nice uh, border stitch. If done all the way around, maybe a pair of jeans or cuff of a shirt or something. And I can see that once you get on a bit of a roll with this, it's not, it appeared difficult at the start, but now it's like, oh, once you got on a roll, you'd be fine. So that's raised, closed, sorry, feather stitch. And then depending on your work, you can just Take that little stitch there to finish it off. Uh, so I imagine this one, if you were going around the cuff, this, this would be your last stitch and you would do a stitch here and then cast off. All right, now the next stitch, because um, I, I think I'll finish it. I'm going to finish it, I'm on a roll. The next stitch is Mount Melick stitch, which is used in white work. All right, so you're going to take one diagonal stitch, come up here, as if it's halfway between your diagonal stitches. Then you're going to loop this, use the back of the needle to get under so you don't split your threads. Do a loop-de-loop. -loop. Now hold that up there. And what you're going to do, so you're holding this out of the way. And you're just going to come back in at that very first point. And with your, keep that like that and come back up at this point where the start of the knot was and then creating a chain stitch. And that's the first stitch. So it is very small because I didn't want to do a big chunky one like this because it is used um, for a line, you know, a, a thin line on white work. So I don't want to overdo it. Okay, so I think uh, I misled you on something. So I've just watched Kathy again. So we're coming up with another diagonal stitch like that. And we're coming up directly opposite it. So it wasn't halfway between. So it's like this. Then we're doing our little wrap under. Keep it out of the way. Then we're coming back into where the chain stitch ended and creating another chain by coming up into that stitch, the base of that stitch. Okay, so I'm going to do it again a couple of times because I only misled you, right? So it's a diagonal and then not halfway through, it's here. 
underneath before you do your wrap. And I'll do it a few times for my own peace of mind as well. Hold it up, go in through the chain. Up at the point that you came in for the wrap and there's a chain. Okay, so diagonal. Below. Under. Hold it out of the way down through the chain up at the point you came in the bottom line and there's your stitch it's quite a nice little stitch isn't it really I can see it would be quite beautiful on um, a lot of white work all right now I'm inspired because I actually do want I do love white on white so I actually think Bit inspired to do something. <laughs> I just, I just noticed it's glue. It's not flaky skin. <laughs> I've been doing my diorama <laughs> with all the glue, layer and layers after layers of Mod Podge to seal things. <laughs> I have to say, it really is quite... I, I can imagine why women just love to sit and do embroidery. It's really very relaxing if you've got a, a stitch that's interesting. And you just want to while away an hour. No TV, no Netflix and chill then. Just doing the last chain on the last stitch. Coming up. And instead of doing the diagonal, I'm just going to secure it there. Okay, we've got one more stitch. All right, it's a knotted blanket or buttonhole. So we need two lines again. Okay, this one is like this. I'm using the whole six strands. I wanted a thicker one. And you you're basically doing a loop like so with your thumb now as you come in here and down you're not going to pull it all the way through but you're going to come up here so this is going to be the edge of your blanket and if you if you haven't pulled it all the way through and you pull it down like this that will create the knot so let's do it that again all right so your thumb you're basically twisting it like so twist you've created a little loop you're coming down which is creating the knot And before you pull it all tight, you're going to come in at a stitch and pulling it downwards will create the knot. Um, I had already tried one and I tried to create the knot before I did this bit and the knot was, it just didn't come onto the line. So let's do it again. This is the last stitch wheel, last stitch wheel stitch then what who knows okay I'm just gonna do the last one I um, went off camera to finish the row and I just realized it's one of those stitches that a bit like bullion knot you know the first time you try it you don't remember it and maybe you get it all wrong maybe it's absolutely frustrating um, and yeah, I just I found it difficult. 
pulling it down. What I found was sometimes if you didn't quite get the pull down really well, the, the knot like this, see, it's loose, really loose. Um, so it is a tricky stitch. So I, I appreciate that Kathy had made Quaker Stitch the last stitch because this could have been very frustrating for some people and it was frustrating for me. So I, yeah, I'll practice that one, but the Quaker Stitch was lovely. So maybe I'll just do a bit of Quaker Stitch off camera to feel like I've finished off really properly. <laughs> so for today, I have finished my stitch wheel. So I'm going to wash it and get off, you know, the bits of the water-based marker. Um, and I'll iron it, which will get off the last bits of the heat-based marker. And then I will look at what, how I'm going to frame it. Um, I, I'm proud of it. I know that probably um, when I look at Kathy's, how absolutely neat and perfect it is that uh, there's a long way for me to go as an embroiderer. But however, I also am really proud that I've created something that I can look at and go, hey, I did that. And I can say, well, I really like this or that or the other. What's that stitch? And there's a reminder of other stitches I can use and how they all look on a, you know, on a stitch wheel. So I'd like to say thank you to Kathy for putting up the whole video playlist that I've been able to follow along with. I'm um, just noticing my cute little acorns, lovely. So, you know, there's heaps here. There's lots of stitches and there's lots of knowledge. And it's great to have the women passing on this knowledge. And yes, guys also embroider and that's fabulous too. Um, I have got some gorgeous, actually I'll show them maybe in the next Thread Thursday. I've got some gorgeous cave facet books. Mm -hmm. So next time when I come back, I will have washed, ironed and worked out how I'm going to display this and started a pineapple piece and I'll bring the cave facet books back. So there, there you go. Thread Thursday's got some momentum again. Fabulous. Here's my little stitchy and I'm using her all the time. I never thought I'd get rid of my other one, but you know, it's just so nice to make your own things. Oh, I love a bit of recycling, crafting, making. What a good life. Okay, <laughs> I will speak to you soon. Bye for now.